Welcome back to the GSL 2012 Blizzard Cup round of six. We are in our first best of five. It's a ZVZ between DRG and Life, and so far, man, the final boss may find himself on his final life. Yeah, Life is good. He's really good, and he's showing everyone that in ZVZ these days, he is able to take on everyone. Yesterday in the group, he won against Sniper. He struggled, then he lost against Violet. But against DRG, a player who dominated the mirror matchup in Group A, he's suddenly 2-0 ahead in the best of five series, one map away from taking it. Yeah, yeah he is looking pretty good, man. And Darngu, like I said, he finds himself on his last life quite literally yeah. if he loses this series. You know, he's got one set left. If he loses any of the next three games, it's over. And life will advance to the semifinals. Every time I see the Star Tales that I'm playing, I have to remember this one quote. I mentioned it already when he had when we had him in uh, the group. Life is what happens while you're making other plans, and this is exactly what happens to DRG right now. He was probably already thinking about his semifinals when he was in the group, and now suddenly he is down 0-2 against his strong opponent. This kid from Star Tail, 15 years old, and he is on top of the world these days. Yeah. He really is, and he uh, may find himself on top of this tournament if he can take this next set. We are playing on perhaps our most normalized map, the map that there's no real special traits to. It's the map we've had in the pool the very longest. It is Daybreak, in fact. It's time for game number three, DRG, the final boss, on his final life, up against the Startail player of the same name here at the GSL 2012 Blizzard Cup, Outer Wall. Starting to the top right is our MVP Zerg player in red. He has to 3-0 his opponent now if he wants to advance to the semi-final. This is... MVP Dongnegu. That's a great way to put it, man. He has to take three wins in a row. And against life of all people. Yep. He said his name already, but we'll give him an intro anyways. The Xenex player taking real full potential when joining Startail. He is... Tati live! There's a strong player already in the Zenex lineup, and then in Star Tail, he finally got the training environment that he needed to shine. In the Star Tail house, he's been training a lot. He's been training with some of the best, with players like Parting, with players like Squirtle and Bomber. And now he won not only MLG, but also a GSL Code S season, and he is on his way to the semi final of the Blizzard Cup. Yep. It's on his way indeed. You know, today he's got just so much momentum going for him. Already taken two wins. Dorigu goes for hatch first, life with the pool first. DRG three games in a row, just liking to, to drop that hatchery first. Yep. And uh, well, in the first game, he didn't cancel the hatch at the end. Of course, you want to cancel it as late as possible if you're up against an early pool, so that your opponent might just stay on the low ground and buys yourself a little bit more time to get the pool up and the zerglings into the game. But at the end, you want to cancel after all, at least if you're not able to save it, and that's what happened. He did not cancel, he lost the hatch, lost the 300 minerals, didn't get anything here. And now we have live with the 2-0, because on the second map, Abyssal City, the Star Tail player made a few small decisions that really influenced the game, gave him an edge, and was able to get back into that game where Don Waku had a huge lead. And right now, on the third game, this is of course now the map where it could end. It could end right here now if Life takes another map win, he advances, and we will jump into the second game in the round of six between Violet and Park. Yeah. But we're not there just yet. Not just yet. And this is a pretty pretty tense moment of course for DRG. Look at his look at his wins man and it's, you can see here this is not just for ZVZ, this is for all his games but in the late game in ZVZ he starts to he starts to struggle a little bit I feel and you can see that in his very late game in all matchups he falls off a bit compared to some of his uh, some of his others of course. After 25 minutes his win rate drops a little bit that's true 
but just such a strong player. I mean, DRG is down two games, but guys, if you have seen his games that he played in Group A and also in the recent tournaments, this guy is so, so strong. He had a tough time when he was not able to advance in the GSL when he suddenly did not go to the GSL code as finally in Busan, was not able to excel in the GSTL with his team, but these days he is playing a lot better and he of course the statistics not, for life. Not a single point of the game where he's got less than 50% win ratio. He's never lost a game in under 9 minutes it's ever. insane. It's crazy. This guy is so good. Well, you know, DRG needs you guys' support. And we've been talking about Twitter a lot in this tournament. I want to continue that. And if you want to follow DRG on Twitter, you want to send him a tweet, add him at MVP Dongregu, just like his ID is spelled. And actually, Life as well, his ID on Twitter is exactly spelled as it is on the top of the screen at Startail underscore Life. So this is something that we here at Going to Be are trying to push out, trying to get these players. Twitter's known a little bit more. You can follow me at Proxy. We'll follow Calder at Calder. And two other important Twitters. I'm trying to push these out this week a lot as well. At StarCraft. Follow Blizzard's official StarCraft Twitter. And at Gome TV. Yep. Definitely make that happen and uh, support the players here a bit. They, of course, have also a quick look on uh, Twitter every single time. So send them a tweet if you support some of them. Especially DRG needs the support now. But looking at this game, we currently have uh, two gas for Dongagu. We have the third gas now coming up for life. And in resources lost, of course, both of them not lost too much. Yeah. Just a few zerglings that were trying to get scouting information. Just a few skirmishes. You know, in the other games, you've seen a little bit more aggression, but not so much in game number three here. One of the trends that continues, though, is that DRG gets this faster tank. We and have now, it with the lair this time. And life's going for this a faster lane aggression. Yeah. He life will is doing. Be scouted, actually. Life is doing a very yeah exactly. He's, the scout in the main base knows now. Okay, you don't have a lair tech, so what are you going to do? Most likely, you're going to try to hit a timing and be a little bit more aggressive. And the zerglings are already on their way. He does not fully commit to this attack. He already starts droning up behind it. But you can see that there are a lot of banelings. A Dongragu has to be ready. He spots it with the Overlord. The Overlord sees the banelings now, and he has to react. He has to get his own counter banelings. He has to get all of them. Yeah, right now he's making six additional ones to put him up to ten. On the other hand, life. He cancels his banelings, all of them. He wants it's to hide them. So smart. He wants to hide them in a place where he's more secure, or either that, or just completely cancel the attack. Because he's forced now, Dongregu, to spend so much gas on his own banelings. In fact, 200 of it. Yeah. You know the thing is, there are two things right now. Life canceling the banelings, realizing that he will probably not be able to do too much with them, forcing his opponents to go into banelings, and now running in with the zerglings, doing damage after all, trying to capture the queens here, and one of them is. Most likely going to die. There we go. Queen number one is dead. The rest of the Zerglings may be able to get into the main base. They see the tech. This is an information that Life didn't have just yet. He did not know that the tech for his opponent was done. But now he sees also the infestation pit on the low ground at the natural. Not only the layer itself in the main base. So he knows what's going on. And he himself did not spend the extra yeah. gas, as you pointed out. I, I like that you mentioned the tech especially, because that attack just did virtually no damage. Killing one queen is not worth losing that many lings. Look at this, DRG actually specifically picking off three tumors here because he wants pushes to be less of a threat to him right now while he gets his tech up a little bit faster. And now he's coming in with the banelings. The queens are a little bit out of position. Doriku might be able to get himself back into the series right now. Here we go! Oh, oh my god! And a sick Ouch. baneling hit! That hurt. That was eight harvesters that he just took down. That really hurt. But if you just look at the overall supply, life is really, really far ahead. He has the better army at this point. He has 44 army supply against 20. He has a lot of roaches here and he kind of has to work with them now. Yeah. Because he dropped behind in harvesters and if Dongregu is able to hold, take his third base, then life is in trouble. So. This army that is on the map has to do something that has to be worth it. He needs to force a cancel at the third. Yeah, he needs to force a cancel at the third. He knows he's got this window of time to work with, but just very few infestors are going to come out. He saw the exact time of the infestation pit with his Ling attack that he had earlier. So he knows, okay, I've got the better roaches. You also just busted out a bunch of banelings on my drone line. You killed enough harvesters to even us out a little bit. But you don't have those banelings here defensively. And he's actually skipping the third. He's going to try to run in here up into a choke point. I don't know how well this is going to work with the infestors now. A good fungal to buy time here. Yeah, he has the numbers and he tries to make something happen with them but we have of course the defenders advantage for DRG which means that the roaches that he's currently just he doesn't have speed yet though. faster he doesn't have roach speed yet and when he's not fumbled life is going to be able to make the better concave he's going to trade pretty efficiently here but he doesn't get the third base I think that's the most important part 
The third base for DLG is up now, and here come the few roaches that he just built. And I don't think that life oh, that can queen. make anything happen here. He will get the queen, and he's going to pick off this roach, but he's going to be able to escape. That's really important, because if he had waited for another investor to come out and trap him, there would have been no escape. And you know, Dongryu didn't mine it all from that third base just yet. Yeah, he delayed this a little bit, but the still, the, the issue stands. The attack is a little bit faster. And the problem for life is he did not really kill a lot here. You know, we had this harvester lead for Dong Ragu and we still have it. It's only five drones right now. But the issue for life earlier was he had lost drones and he had this he had these units sitting there. And it's like if you inherit a lot of money and you have it at home and you look at it. You want to bring it to the bank. You want it to work for you. You want yeah. to have interest. So looking at the money and in this turn the road just doesn't help you. It's just sitting there. So you have to do something with them. And he tried to equalize the game. And he was able to kill a little bit and force the LG into a weird situation where he could not mine from his third base, but the lead in economy is still there for Dong Regu. Yeah, it's still there. I want to see something very important. No, yeah, life does not research burrow, so he can't actually heal those roaches from earlier on with that burrow because roaches have that special regenerative passive ability where they burrow. They get a ton of hit points back. They already regenerate pretty quick, but with the burrow, so much faster. And you can see that we have this massive drone lead now for Dong Ragu. Yeah. 14 drones ahead. And he's also got the better position on the map. Life has to be a little bit defensively. He's desperately trying to get out his path plans. Wants to get his plus two out. Both of those are very delayed here. But I feel like the longer the game goes, Doringu has, you know, technically speaking, he's got more advantages. On the other hand, Doringu has not shown the best late game in decision making compared to life. Uh, at this point, Dongragu has really once again uh, the lead. A massive lead. He's got the fourth base even going up right now. I mean, the Hydra Den is ready for both of them, but the fourth, as you just said, is already being built for Dongragu now. And Life will see that. He should see that fairly soon. He doesn't have an overload in the vicinity, so he doesn't really know about it, but I think that we will soon see a few units trying to run in and get those information. Yeah, he just saw it with his Overseer, so now okay. he's got the idea. Sees it with the Overseer, so now he knows that he either has to man up an attack and try to take the 4th down before it really before he can capitalize on it, or he has to get his 4th uh, up as well. Yeah. The Lord Creep Tumor is being taken out by DRG. DRG aggressively taking out these tumors because he knows that he wants to keep life off his 4th since he has the better map control and he has the better uh, economy. That Overseer may escape from life controls it, but nope, there's the bundle. Ouch. Now, life is moving out with a small force. This is not really going to accomplish very much, though. The one thing that Dong Ragu has to be careful about is also that later on in the game, well, he has 71 uh, harvesters now, so he's going to build a few additional extractors, but yeah, there's always the uh, the uh, danger of overdroning against the Zerg later. This is one of the things that happened in game number one. Uh, if you lose, if you, if your opponent gets the momentum, he can carry it into your base. So if you are G, he's building drones again now. If he builds too many, that might be something that is going to work against him. Yeah. He has the better army supply at this point, uh, though. So right now, it's actually not an issue, but it might become an issue later on. Hatchery had to be cancelled for life, though. DRG really working with that a little bit. He can also make spine crawlers with those drones yeah. if he starts to realize that, hey, wait a minute, this is actually not working out with my uh, army size a little bit too small. Right now, it's actually just about nine supply difference. It's not too bad, yeah. I mean, considering that he's already more than nine supply ahead, it doesn't really matter in this case, but later on, it could become an issue. He's maxed out at this point. So and he actually starts a spine. Right now, we have him with spine crawlers. We have him also with the armor upgrade a little bit faster. He's getting an upgrade lead here. He has the fourth base up and this will just give him the bank again you can see that the minerals are already up to 2200 the gas bank is a bit more important but that's also something that is currently working on it must feel weird as a zerg player to kill three tumors actively and there's the hive thing again he's going for the hive again and also for the second uh, evolution chamber he wants to go into the upgrades right away when the hive is done and nice. for life the night is. But this time Dongrigu has uh, two links on the left and the right side of his main base to spot for exactly where those two yeah. overlords are. Where are the overlords for for life? Where does he have? He's only at the main yeah. base. Both of them are spotted by those links yeah. I was talking about. So he, Only where the links are. Nothing else. Look at this. That seems a little bit too predictable to me. He just threw away a ton of drones and now Dongrigu is all he has to do is sit back and protect himself against an attack. Well, yeah, right now we have him with this uh, huge amount of drones that he has and he's getting now the spine crawlers because he realizes, well, if you sacrifice your drones, you won't have more army supply. And if I have 20 more drones than you, then this gives you an edge in the fight. So I have to reduce my drone count, which is exactly what he does. But he still has 15 Nidus. more drones than his opponent. Nidus is spotted. 
To the bottom right, he's not going to be able to make a single unit out of that Nidus. He needs to start another one somewhere else. He starts one in the main base. That has been... No! Oh, it's the perfect oh spot, but he transfers drones, and the transferring drones see it! And it's not even too late. Oh my god, this was a bit lucky for DRG. But with that movement on that Zerling, he might be able to start another one that's on spot to the right side of the base. That was a little bit lucky for him. I mean, his circling positioning was quite good, but life finds the blind spot, and then only yeah, only the Harvester to the bottom is going to scout it. Man, and life again. is so great if he's actually going to throw even more Harvester's way, and this is going to put him down to somewhere in the 30s. DRG has to sack drones now. He has to sack drones. He is 20 harvesters ahead of his opponent. He needs to sacrifice a few of them. He's going into spine crawlers. Nia can afford them, but he needs more. He needs more army supply. With the spine crawlers, this is of course helping quite a lot, but he has to be careful with the army supply. Life is 30 supply ahead in army supply. I think this may be the most supply in army I've ever seen in the Zerg. 162. With six more investors rallied in, that's exactly what he remaxes with after those drones are gone. He may even throw the rest of his drones away. We have plus three now coming up, and also plus two armor. Both upgrades for DRG a lot faster than for life. Life doesn't even have the high tech. I the bank like is much better for Dom Ragu, but the army supply. If life, as an official city, gets the momentum again, DRG might lose it, but he has all the cards in his hand. Yeah, and life it just doesn't really have a good angle of attack. I feel like life needs to be mining from his third base, though, if he's going to be mining like this. He's mining at a really bad saturation in his main base, and he could have moved those drones over to the third, which is completely empty right now. Just something to think about, food for thought here, as life tries to find the angle of attack. He might come in from two sides, but he needs to come in from three sides, really. One from the line of sight blocker, one from the big ramp, and one from the secondary big ramp on the left side. I think that's the best way for him to attack. Life waits too long, his opponent will have plus two armor, but that's not the case just yet. And here comes Lion. His, the spine crawlers are against him. This is the advantage that DRG has. The advantage, defender's advantage here. And the, the spine concave crawlers. comes with him as well. Life only attacks from one side here, and Dong Regu looks like he may have enough to just push this back. DRG is immediately remaxing his army. He has the lava to do it, so does Lion. Life is also building a lot of roaches here. We currently have an army supply of 150 against 120 in favor of Life, who uses another forward Nidus. Tries to push his way in, but the spine crawlers, they are still alive and kicking. Yeah, he wastes a lot of units on those uh, spines, and now Dorian has enough. GG. GG. Dorian Gu, man, he says, No, you will not have a 3 0 with me. I am the final boss. He's using his drones that he has, a huge amount of them for spine crawlers, and the spine crawlers helped him in the last fight. Dong Ragu takes another win. What life did here is just basically pinging on the map and telling his opponent, waving a red flag and being like, okay, I'm going to attack soon. Here are my drones, take them. I want to have more army supply. Dong Ragu did not sack his drones, but he started to build a lot of spine crawlers, and those helped him in the battle. Because the problem for life was there was no point to engage where he could circumvent the spine crawlers. Yeah. The, the Nidus network just didn't go up. It didn't work at all, man. If the Nidus networks would have worked and he did not have to fight with against the spine crawlers, he kills the that's tag. a different story. He kills the tag, he uh, kills a lot of the infrastructure in the main, then comes out and comes out of another Nidus network. When you give life a Nidus network, man, he's going to yeah. have a network all over the map if he gets a chance. DIG played really well here with his map control, just with his scouting, with his awareness. Killing all those uh, Nidus networks was really, really important. He was still behind in army supply, but the spine crawler advantage, that helped him so much. And of course the position that we talked about in the last game. Yep. As it is, DRG wins the first game. He has to take two more maps if he wants to advance. This to the entire tournament, man, look at Donergu. He just His facial expression has not changed. He has looked like this win or loss the entire tournament. He is not messing around. He's removed his emotions from the booth. He's taken to the third game, but if he loses this map, he's still out. The map is Whirlwind, DRG versus Life. 2012 with GSL Blizzard Cup with Elder and Wolf.